Now, the EU has warned Elon Musk over the disinformation surrounding the Hamas attacks on Israel and subsequent conflict. Fake news has flooded X, formerly known as Twitter, and the platform is struggling to contain it. I'm going to speak like I know what I'm talking about. Under new laws, failing to moderate content such as fake news could incur significant fines. Mm -hmm. Joining us now to make sense of this is the founder of the Centre for Countering Digital Hate, Imran Ahmed. Uh, Imran, good morning. Uh, welcome to Talk Today. Um, can we talk about how we now are in a world where the younger generations certainly seem to get a lot of their news from social media, the way people, you know, understand things has changed? And how dangerous is it when fake videos and fake pictures and fake information is taken and put into people's lives? And what do we need to do to change this situation, my friend? Well, look, there's a whole array of issues there. I mean, X, ironically, isn't a platform used by young people. They wouldn't be seen dead on it. It's TikTok and Instagram that has their attention. And there is a problem on those platforms as well, which is why Thierry Breton has written to Meso, which owns Instagram. But look, we have a general problem right now. There is an absolute tidal wave of disinformation and hate content flooding onto all types of social media. Why? Because there are a number of different types of bad actors who are doing that. There's literally foreign hostile states. There are extremists, both foreign and domestic. There are people who, who literally have turned, uh, have built a business around engagement farming. So trying to get as much engagement for content as possible, often reusing, recycling old images of terrible atrocities and saying they're happening right now, trying to get people to amplify them so they can build their followers, they can build their viewers and make revenues as a result of it. But this is happening while platforms have been shedding their trust and safety staff. So in the last year, X and Meta have reduced the number of trust and safety staff. And of course, we already know that their algorithms promote the most controversial, extreme content to the mainstream. Why do they do that? Because it gets the most engagement. And really, these platforms, I mean, they aren't free speech zones. They are advertising zones. 98% of the revenues of a big company like Meta comes from advertising. And they are using fake images, using the fact that there is controversy, hate content that just horrifies and appalls us to keep us glued. Imran, how difficult is it, though, to verify some of this content mm. that is put out on, on social media? We saw this within the Ukraine-Russia conflict. We're seeing it now in Israel. But how can we actually verify what we are seeing on social media? Well, the truth is you can't. You know, this is the first conflict I can remember for maybe a decade where my first instinct to switch on social media and see what people are saying has proven to be futile because trying to pass between what is true and what is not, especially in the age of generative artificial intelligence, which allows the production of incredibly sophisticated fakes without any effort, it's impossible. I mean, for experts like my team, just can't be bothered trying to work out what's true or not because it would take more time than it would to just switch off Twitter and switch on the telly or the radio and see what's being said on well curated, fact checked, and timely news programmes. Imran, unless, I, unless, I, unless I miss the point, and I sort of agree with you, uh, I'd like it just briefly, if I can, what do we need to do to make sure that this stuff is fact checked? I mean, Elon Musk has started a legal dispute against your organisation. Apparently, I don't know why. Uh, maybe you can explain very briefly. But what needs to happen to make sure this fake news ain't getting out there and impacting on the younger generation? Very briefly for me, my friend. Well, look, the UK has already passed an online safety bill. It's waiting for the king to give it his signature before Ofcom take over the powers of being able to say to these companies, look, you've got community standards and a duty to the public in the most extreme cases, which you have to abide by. And if you fail to do so, we're going to fine you. And until recently, until the passage of the Digital Services Act in the European Union and the online safety bill in the UK, an absolute flagship and impressive piece of legislation from this government, we haven't had the ability to say to these companies, you need to do your jobs mm. or we will impose costs on you because the truth is the cost of the lies that are being spread right now will be paid in lives that's what always happens when anti-semitic propaganda proliferates on platforms we know what it leads to
Imran, uh, we've seen some horrific images over the past few days. Sadly, not fake news, but we're talking about the rapes and, and murders of innocent civilians that have then been posted onto Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, etc. That perhaps wouldn't have happened 20 years ago. Do you think that social media platforms are actually should bear some kind of responsibility yeah. for the way in which terrorism is being carried out? Because ultimately, these people are, are doing these kind of things so that it can be filmed and used as a form of terrorism. Should, should Twitter, Facebook just put an absolute blanket ban on any content being uploaded? Look, the truth is that this isn't a new problem because we know that Islamic State pioneered the use of extreme footage, for example, setting prisoners on fire, and filming executions and, uh, and, and other atrocities some years ago. I mean, this has been going on for close to a decade now, this strategy by terrorist groups. And yes, you're absolutely right. We should not give further oxygen to the propaganda they produce to do damage to our society. They do it because they know it works. Imran, I know I you're going to hate me, my friend. I'm really, really sorry. I could talk to you forever. I've got somebody shouting in my ear, forgive me, but really, really Thank good you. to have you on. Thank you. Amy